Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, we start another upload of uh, the 2022 syllabus. Uh, this is the November 21 paper 2-2. Uh, as I mentioned before, also this paper 2-2, uh, paper 2-1, 2-2, or 2-3, whichever is variant is in your country. Uh, this is for one hour and 15 minutes, and you're really actually fighting for time. So please be very careful in reading the question, reading it twice, underlining the keywords, and then starting on with the question. So it's a very important time uh, exam skill in which you are very aware of the time available to you. So the first question, which is number one, is there are two types of cells, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Bacterial cells are prokaryotic. So remember BP, blood pressure, or any other which you want to remember it as. And plant cells are a eukaryotic. So I always ask you to remember it as APE. Animal cell, plant cell are eukaryotes. So just a way to remember things because you have to do a lot of rote learning in biology. Now part A is asking you, read the question again. There are differences in the structural features that are common to bacterial cells and plant cells. So plant cells are eukaryotes, animal cells are eukaryotes, even fungus is a eukaryote. For example, the cell membrane in a plant cell contains cholesterol, but in a bacterial cell, the membrane contains hoponoids. Well, they've learned something new. Now don't get worried and don't get upset because there's some word that you're hearing which you've never heard before in your life. Cholesterol and hoponoids have the same function. Well, they've also told you this thing that they have the same function. Some of the main structural features common to both types of cell are shown in table 1.1. Complete table 1.1 by giving number one, one difference, underline that, between a bacterial and a eukaryote. So it's basically they're asking you the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. If you know that, well, you know it, then you are a lucky guy. The difference between the cell membrane of the two types of cell has been completed for you. So, okay, so we go on as you go along in the question, now it's table 1.1. Cell membrane, they've given you now these features. Please remember now, this is a very interesting table. You always write features. Features means whatever you're going to talk about. And then of course, so there are always three columns. This is also in your paper three. We do this many times and ask you a question in which you say, compare this with this. So this is the thing you have to talk about. So if I, like I say, compare Ibrahim with Fahim. So what do you say? Features, height, taller, smaller or shorter, taller or shorter, something like this. So feature comes first, and remember always to write that, whether it's this paper or it's paper three or any other paper in which you have to compare stuff. So cell membrane, then ribosome, then DNA, and then cell wall. Now, of course, I will refer to the mark scheme and show you how you will write it wrong and how you will write it uh, in the correct manner to get your uh, three out of three in this. So remember, if it's three lines, so that means there's one mark for this, one mark for this, one mark for this. If it was something very difficult, then there would have been six marks because then there would be six ticks and six marks. But no, this is a sort of an easier question. So it is marked per line. Now, this time I'm referring to the mark scheme because I want you all to learn how to read the mark scheme. Some of you have commented in my on my videos and said that you don't know how to read mark schemes. Well, that's very strange if you don't know how to read mark scheme, but maybe yes, you've not been trained to do it. So look at here, it says 70s, or you said smaller, or it said the size 18 to 20 nanometers. Now what does this mean, I? I means ignore, no ATS. But then it says in this we have ATS, but it says A means allow, and it allows 70s as well. So ATS and 70s, now that's very interesting. Why would a plant cell have 70s? Yes, plant cells would have 70s in the mitochondria and the chloroplast. So you see, when they have said an A, A means an allow. That means this must have been added after the papers were checked because this is something which the examiners did not foresee. And so then they say, okay, well, we saw a lot of that in a number of papers. So now we have a meeting of the examiners and we say, okay, allow ATS and 70S. So if you said ATS and 70S, if you just said 70S, well, that won't get you a mark because basically plant cells in the cytoplasm, the ribosomes, the fixed and the free ribosomes are ATS but it's only in the mitochondria and the chloroplast, which are both present in um, some plant cells. Please remember chloroplast is not present in all plant cells. And then the second mark scheme point is circular, closed loop of DNA. So this was the mark for this. It says must be across the dotted rows. And this of course is linear DNA. So these are words which you must know, linear DNA, circular DNA, or a closed loop of DNA. Then this does not have any histones. So you said naked DNA, or if you said no histones, that's an allowed, A is means allowed. And this is with histones or with basic proteins, which you said. So with histone, no histone, with histone. And then uh, in the bacterial cell, they're free in the cytoplasm because in a bacteria, there is no nucleus. So the ribosomes are free in the cytoplasm. 
or in the cytosol or not enclosed by the nuclear envelope or found in the nucleoid region. These were all possible answers which were correct and enclosed by the nuclear envelope. So here the DNA is enclosed by the nuclear envelope. So you got a mark for that. Then the cell wall mainly composed of peptidoglycan or the other word for this is murin. And this of course is mainly composed of cellulose. So I think everybody is pretty clear on this. And uh, we will be pretty, uh, if you have really revised prokaryote and eukaryote, you'll be able to do this question. There is no doubt about it. It is something which is very, very simple and easy to comprehend. Uh, then coming on to the part B of the question, one role of the cell surface membrane of bacterial cells and plant cells is the transport of substances into and out of the cells. So whether it's a bacteria, whether it is a plant cell, uh, the cell membrane actually regulates what goes in and what goes out of the cell. So they've said, okay, fine, both are common. Explain how membrane carrier proteins and membrane channel proteins are involved in the transport of substance into and out of the cell. So again, read the question, underline the keywords, and I'm sure you're going to figure this out. Now, as we look at the mark scheme for transport of ions and hydrophilic yeah, polar molecules, now, this R means it's a reject. If you implied that all the substances cannot cross the bilayer, well, that's not very correct, all the substances. What are all the substances? And then it's a I means it said ignore substances, bypass you, do not need to cross the bilayer. That's again an ignore. And R is a reject. Reject means that you, we're not going to give you any marks for that. So basically, you have to understand that this is the hydrophobic part of the cell membrane, the fatty acid tail. So anything which is water soluble cannot pass it. What can pass it is small uncharged molecules. Small U uncharged M molecule. So why do we need the channel proteins and the carrier proteins is actually for the uh, ions and the water soluble or the hydrophilic or the polar molecules. Then the second, this was one mark scheme point. Then the second mark scheme point is carrier proteins are for active transport and facilitated diffusion and channel proteins are only for facilitated diffusion. So carrier proteins will have an ATP binding site and the ATP will bind to it and form ATP and energy will be released. Remember what I'm saying, energy will be released. So the carrier proteins are for active transport and facilitated diffusion, but the channel proteins are basically for only facilitated diffusion. Then if you gave me a third point is that further detail that having specific binding sites or they're specific for specific molecules and they use ATP or they use energy and they move substances against the concentration gradient, that's all one mark scheme point. So it's not a million mark scheme points, it's just one mark scheme point if you give me all those information and you said, okay, it has an ATP binding site, it changes shape, there's a conformational change as it says here. So this was the third mark scheme point. The fourth is further details of the channel protein. Further details means some ions or uh, protein channels are only for ions and they are selective for the size and the charge like sodium ions would have one channel protein. Then uh, chloride ions would have a separate channel protein. Chloride ions would have a separate channel protein. So you've got to be giving me some more additional information that channel proteins are not, are, are not selective and aquaporins for the passage of water. Some are voltage gated channels and move substances down the concentration gradient. So any other information, so they basically, the marks were only three, but you had available four mark scheme points, which again then tells you, okay, write more. Write more and then of course you show to get your three out of three. Then we come on to part C, figure 1.1 is a photo micrograph showing the chloroplast in plant leaf cells. Now explain why. You can see the chloroplasts are somewhere here, right at the periphery. You can see that, you know, so they're all here. These are the chloroplasts which are found all on the side. So why are they all outside? Why are they all towards the edge? Periphery means the edge. I mean, you must know this word. It says periphery edge. They've explained that to you. They knew that you all were slightly chungered and might not know that. So explain why the chloroplasts are seen only around the periphery of each plant cell. Why are they all on the outside? Why don't we see some, some chloroplasts in the center? Some here maybe in the center, some on the periphery. But why don't we see that? They've asked you a simple question. It's only one mark. It's pushed by the vacuole. I know we have a meeting place in our school and we have a huge conference table in the center. So all the chairs are on the side. The, the reason they're on the side because you've got a huge table occupying the center of the room. So pushed by the vacuole. Or you can say the vacuole filled with cell sap. 
or you can say large permanent vacuole in the center of the cell. So this is the one point, any one of these and you would have got your one out of one. Uh, now coming to part D, figure 1.2 shows plant cell in a root tape where cell division by mitosis is taking place. Identify two cells in figure 1.2 that are different stages of mitosis. Now you can see this is the middle of it. So this would be my uh, metaphase. I said middle metaphase. I've revised that in a previous uh, paper as well. And then of course you can't see any anaphase. And you see whenever you see these sort of structures, these are usually interphase. But they have not asked you what interface. Why is interface not part of the deal? And that was because only that student. Student must remember what was mitosis. Mitosis was just P mat. You have a purple mat. But the I is not part of it. Interface is not part of the mitosis. Mitosis is only prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. I'm sure many of you would have written interface because you're all casual. You just must have made a careless mistake. But I'm sure you all knew it. And prophase, they become prominent. So this would be prophase. And I'm sure the students who wrote interface uh, need to be reprimanded. I would have, of course, liked to spank them, but I mean, I can't physically uh, spank any of you. So prophase, prophase and metaphase, that was the only one you could have write because mitosis is only P mat, purple mat, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So it says draw a label line to each cell and add the name of the stage of mitosis as is shown. So that finishes question number one. Now, coming to question number two, the high blood pressure uh, at the arterial end of a capillary network results in some components of blood leaving the capillaries and forming tissue fluid. At the venous end, the presence of plasma protein allows movement of water by osmosis back into the capillaries. So yes, I mean, we've got the arterial end. So this has to be the arterial end. Why? Because it's got a small lumen. This is what you have to understand. Now, this has got a large lumen. So this has to be the vein. So the capillaries are joining the artery with the so tissue fluid coming out, body cells shown, lymph vessels shown. Uh, uh, so in some components of blood leaving the capillaries and forming tissue fluid at the venous end, the presence of plasma proteins allow movement of water by osmosis back. Figure 2.1 is a diagram showing a capillary network. The lymph vessels and the blood vessels at the artery and venous end of the, are also shown. Okay, red blood cells are plasma proteins such as albumin remain in the capillaries and are not found in the tissue fluid. Explain why red cells and albumin do not leave the capillary. So you had to understand is why does it not leave the capillary? Basically, it doesn't leave the capillary because it's too large and they cannot pass through the endothelial gaps or the pores. And please remember, holes is a reject. If you had written holes, I'm sorry, it's a reject. That means somebody must have written it. That's why it's in the mark scheme. That's a reject. Holes is wrong. So be very careful how you write the biological English cannot pass through the gaps or the pores in the endothelium. Then name the chemical reagent, uh, reagent or reagents used to test for proteins in a sample of blood plasma and state the color change. So by unit reagent and it would be blue to purple or you can say lilac, mauve, violet, whatever English suits you. Uh, when a person moves from sea level and states at a high altitude for a few months, there's an increase. Sorry, this is not in the syllabus anymore. So we do not discuss this. Then uh, a low blood albumin concentration can lead to a condition known as edema. Edema is a swelling of tissue caused by the accumulation of tissue fluid surrounding the body cells in the capillary network. Suggest and explain. I always say suggest is something very tough. You need to figure it out if you know it. Otherwise, just leave it. Suggest and explain how a low blood albumin concentration uh, lead to edema. You've got to understand is that this is the capillary, right? And this is the arterial end, this is the venous end. So what you have to understand is that the plasma proteins are the ones which stay the same. Say there are 1,000 plasma proteins here. So there are 1,000 here as well. But they cannot come out. But you see, when the water moves out, what you have to understand is water moves out in all directions. But the water moving in is because of the plasma proteins, because there's a lower water potential. So in edema, they've told you what happens. A low blood albumin concentration can lead to a condition known as edema. So edema is a swelling of the tissues. It means that the tissue fluid is remaining here and is unable to go back. So suggest and explain how a low blood albumin concentration can lead to edema. Now I explained it and I'll give you the exact words now. Then coming to part D of the question, a low blood albumin concentration can lead to a condition known as edema. Edema is a swelling caused by the accumulation of tissue fluid um, surrounding the body cells in the capillary network. So too much water in the tissue fluid suggest and explain how. So less solute, less albumin means less solute. So the, water, the blood will be a higher water potential. 
So then this, there's a less steep water potential gradient. I mean, this is the water potential sign which I have made here. Uh, less water returns to the blood. You see, if the if the tissue fluid, the water is not returning, so that's why it's going to stay there. I mean, you could have guessed it from the question. I mean, the child who's got a lot of common sense will be able to figure this out. Uh, so more water enters the tissue fluid and less albumin than normal to act as the osmotic force for water to return. As I just explained earlier, the water has to return because of the albumin. The albumin is now less. This used to be 1,000. Now it's only 500. So less albumin means less solute means in the blood now there is a higher water potential. Please hear this twice so that you can understand what I'm trying to tell you all. Now coming to part E of the question, albumin transports uh, some cell signaling molecules from the cells where they are synthesized to their target cells. The cell signaling molecule bind to specific cell surface membrane. Proteins in the target cell. Name the type of membrane protein. So it's just cell surface receptors. So that was a clear, whether you said receptors or not, but it's actually cell surface receptors. So that was the answer to that. That finishes this question. Uh, question three, uh, baculovirus is a virus that kills some of the insect pests of major crops. When the virus is released by the outs to the outside of the insect body, it is uh, contained. it is contained within stable protective structures known as polyhedrons. The main component of the polyhedron is a protein molecule, polyhedrin. Polyhedrons can be sprayed onto plants as a bioinsecticide. They are ingested by feeding insect larvae and once inside the insect gut, they break down to release the virus. Explained by the term infectious disease can be used to describe the effect of uh, vaculovirus on insects. So basically it's a pathogen and the second point would be transmissible. The fact that infectious diseases can be transferred from one person to another, and that is the reason why we call them. So basically, there has to be a pathogen involved in it, and the fact that it can be transmitted from one insect host to another, or it is transmissible, and that would get you the two marks. Then it says, suggest and explain the conditions present in the insect gut that can cause the breakdown of the polyhedrons. Then the B part of the question says, suggest and explain the conditions present in the insect gut that can cause the breakdown of polyhedrons, acidic conditions, disruption of the hydrogen ionic bonds, maybe digestive enzymes, maybe extracellular enzymes, which break the peptide bonds. And of course, it provides the optimum pH. Then the next part, the C part. Uh, polyhedron molecule is composed of three identical polypeptides. Each polypeptide is 245 amino acids long. The first 10 amino acids are shown in figure 3.1. So we've been, they've been given you the, this is the primary structure. Sequence of amino acids gives you the first 10 amino acids. Figure 3.2a, this one, is a ribbon diagram of a single polypeptide and 3.2b shows a polyhedron molecule. The two diagrams are not to the same scale. With reference to figure 3.1 and figure 3.2, describe the structure of a polyhedron molecule. Look at the mark scheme, you know, the figure 5.1, the first 3.1 was the primary structure. So primary structure is given, or if you said the sequence of amino acid is given, uh, that gave you, that, that got you a mark for that. Secondary structure was given, so alpha helixes were shown. You can see the alpha helixes like this were shown, and the beta pleated sheets were also shown, and the area of random coils were shown. Then the tertiary structure was also seen. You can see the folding of it because it's all the interactions between the side chains and the R groups. That was also given. And in the quaternary structure, you could example see the three identical polypeptide chains and the interaction of the polypeptide chains. So all of the four structures, and this was, uh, it says if detail is linked to incorrect level of structure or levels of structure not named, then a maximum of three. So you had to be very sure what you were talking about. You couldn't have said primary structure is the alpha helix. That would be absolute rubbish. So primary structure has to be the sequence of amino acid. Secondary structure is the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet. As long as you just memorize this part, and whenever there's a question on this, you can just uh, you know write it down. So coming to the D part of the question, the sequence of DNA nucleotides for the gene in baculovirus that codes for the polyhedrin polypeptide has been determined. Explain why the amino acid sequence of the polypeptide cannot be used to deduce this sequence of nucleotide in the gene that goes for that. Now I'm going to revise something with you and then I'm going to come back to this question. First of all, I want you to understand that the mRNA has the codons and this AUG is always the start codon. 
and it's the codon. Please remember, codon is on the mRNA, not on the DNA. So the mRNA comes, and then of course we have the tRNA is coming and bringing the correct amino acid. So the mRNA is always on the mRNA. We have the start codon is always AUG, and it always brings the amino acid MET, which is methionine. And then we have the nucleus, and the nucleus the mRNA comes out. So just a quick revi a revision of this. And then, of course, you need to pause this video here, have a look at it, and you can see if you know it's AUG, then it has to be UAC. Because U is only present in the RNAs. U is not present in the DNAs. Then let's look at this new diagram. Now, of course, you can see here U, U, U. Now, all these code for phenylalanine. Now, these amino acids, we have a whole lot. This, 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 this. All these are for U. Then for serine, we have four. For pro, we have again four. And you can see AUG met is the start codon. And then we have all these which are the stop codons. You don't have to know these, you don't have to memorize these, but I'm just telling you all this information. So for lysine, we have two again. Then for this, we have two again. Then for alanine, we have four. And you see what happens is that the third base changes. It's GCU, GCC, GCA. So it's only the third one which changes, which gives you the different options available to you because you have four raised to the power four, you have 64 combinations, but you only have 20 amino acids. So you only have 20 amino acids with 64 combinations. And how do we figure this out? Now it says the first letter, so U, this is the first letter. Then it says second, second letter. So this is the second letter here. And then this is the third letter. Here you can see the third letter. Please, everybody must know how to read this table. I usually teach this to you in the very first uh, few classes of the A levels. So U, U, U. So first letter, second letter, and then the third letter. I'm sorry I made such a mess of it, but this is what I expect you to understand. Now coming to another diagram. Now you can see here the DNA and the RNA. So in the DNA, you have T, A, T, C, G, A, T, C, G. In the RNA, you have A, U, C, G, a university government college. Here you have at government college or at C, G. So DNA and RNA, and you can compare them and you can pause this video here and have a look at it. And I would like you to go through it once more just to see it. Then we have here strand to be transcribed. So DNA, transcription, RNA, and then translation and the polypeptide. Now again, the next uh, diagram, this is something, mis is there a mistake in this uh, diagram? Please have a pause it before you, uh, before you answer it. Uh, what is wrong about this? Think about it. And I'm sure you can think why it is wrong. Why is it wrong? Anybody? No. Oh, I didn't get any answer. It says codon. Codon is an RNA. Why is there a T here? Mistake. I expected you to pick that up. I, maybe you get this in the question in the exam. That was a mistake. Okay. Here the question again. Why the amino acid sequence cannot be used to reduce the sequence of uh, nucleotides? Now you can figure this out. Referring to the mark scheme, genetic code, one mark. Amino acids coded for by more than one codon. Two or more codons for most amino acids. Then 64 codons and 20 amino acids. Then third base in the codon can be different. Only first two bases in codons are the same. Then idea that amino acid sequence is only the result of exons. You see, remember, if you remember it, there are exons and introns. You need to revise that if you don't remember that. Probably I'm going to revise that in another video. Only sure of sequence for two amino acids, met and the TRP amino acid. Then degenerate code, degeneracy of code. It's a degenerate code. And uh, then it's a control sequence. Then stop codons also, ha also have more than one triplet of bases. And stop codons do not specify. Stop codons do not specify any amino acids. And I'm just going to explain this degenerate code. So stop codons also have more than one triplet of bases. And stop codons do not specify any amino acids. Now, explaining to you the, uh, the word, the term degenerate code, redundancy of the genetic code. Another term for this is degenerate. Now, what does degenerate mean? There are many situations where different codons specify the same amino acid. Now, look at here. Leucine, we have got all this. They specify for the same amino acid. UUA, UUG, CUU, CUC, CUA. 
So, but no codon will ever specify for two different amino acids. So you can't have U, U, U coding for two amino acids. It has to be always phenylalanine, PHE. The codons encoding for one amino acid will usually differ in the third or the second position. This makes it more difficult for mutations to cause serious issues. Another situation which explains this is here, degeneracy of one may be specified by more than one codon. Alanine is coded by all this story. First, second, third, that's a wobble position. And so, of course, please understand this word degenerate code. What does it mean? You must know this degenerate code. Uh, that finishes this video. We've done the first three questions and inshallah very soon I'll do the next three questions as well. And uh, you'll see frequent uploads for the 2022 syllabus. And please do give me your comments about if there are any other specifics that you want me to revise with you all. I'm, of course, trying to put, uh, put up a video on what are the things which have been removed and what have been uh, what are new in the syllabus. And thank you once again uh, for watching and uh, please do subscribe uh, to the channel. Thank you very much.